Chapter 64, Stephenson POV Here's the file you asked for, and your dinner. Maya drops the file and sets the dinner plate for me. Adjusting my messed up desk, she walks around, her heels clicking the floor. I'm still at office as I have buried myself in the work. It's past midnight, Maya adds quickly, as I take the file, going through the lines. You can leave, I mutter. I was hoping for a ride from you. I live just a few miles down your new home. I shifted a few days ago. My girlfriend got a new job. Maya explains. It's not my home, Maya. I correct her. She's referring to house where Penelope lives. Today, I'm completely sober and have lot in my plate. Different thoughts. Not emotions, maybe. Oh, I'm sorry. You said me to take you home and mentioned that address as home. So I guessed. Maya shrugs and I look at her surprised. Did I say that? I was drunk, so it never counts. I'll fight my state. You know what, Maya? I was drunk, so you can take my car. I'll catch a cab. I'm not sure if I'm going home tonight anyway. I rub my forehead as stretch my muscles. It's not even home. It's called house. That's it? Okay, I'll get going then. Maya speaks. I give a firm nod at her as I walk towards the window as I stare at the sky out. You sure you don't want anything? Maya quickly asks as she walks towards the door. Maybe somebody to fuck. My voice sounds like a rugged breathe, but I know she heard me. I just feel different today. Maybe it's too much work. Or I'm just old. 32. I'll call up the agency and book an immediate appointment. Your penthouse address? She asks. Yes. I answer as my eyes narrow as I watch the dark sky. My mind feels lost as I stand alone. It's just emptiness. Age 29. Her size? I raise my hand as I stop Maya as she starts reading out the details. I would probably like to know. Confirm it. I sigh as I turn around. You look different. Maya adds, like a worrisome way. And today, you're talking too much. Suit yourself out, Maya. My voice comes out cold as I glare at her. Yes, sir. Her name is Rose. She must be at her your place within two hours. She adds before walking out. Rose. I shake my head as I hear another pet name for all those women who works as a standardized whores, going on to the rich people, getting paid for their fucking business. But I don't blame them. It's money for them, and madness for some. Also pleasure. Sipping down my alcohol, I stare at the women, who's undressing in front of me. What position you want me, sir? She looks at to me, with a sultry smile. First, I want you to fetch the cane from my draw and those handcuffs. I point at the draw, which has left open. She runs her tongue down the cane as she pulls it out before showing it to me, as seeking a permission. Taking handcuffs, she takes a step forward, but I put out a new order. Crawl. And she smiles as she holds the cane between her lips and the cuffs balancing it around her neck as she crawls towards me. She brings her hands, offered, in an attempt to touch me. But I'm quick enough to grab her wrists as I flip her around, bring her both the hands on her back as I handcuff them. Pushing her body onto the ground, I take the cane in my hand as I rub it against my pants. Pick a number. She looks up to me through the corner of her eyes as she answers, Four. 
I let out a small chuckle as I spank the cane against her ass, leaving her crying out. As the red marks appear on her pale skin, count. Yes, sir. Thirteen? Fourteen? I see a bit of blood as I spank her, her final hit, which rips her skin. Her eyes looks filled with tears as she muffles her cries. Good job. Now it's time for your reward. I tear the condom packet open as I undo my trousers. Come on, Rose. Tell me, what do you want? I lean over as I lift her face, grabbing her hair. You! She breathes out. Try again. My hands grips her breasts as she tries to speak. I want you to fuck me. Hard, master. A small smile forms on my lips. That's right. Master will grant your wish. Within one quick move, I thrust into her, each of my thrust leaving her gasping for air as she screams out loud out of pleasure. Her wetness, the way her walls shudders against my dick, makes me thrust harder into her. But I miss those blue eyes, her soft cries. Yes, yes, sir. Fuck me. Please, she cries out. I grip her waist as I continue my assault on her sweet pussy. Do you want to come, Rose? I ask her. My voice sounds strained as my balls feel tight. Yes, sir. I want to come. Please. She moans out. I undo the handcuffs around her waist as I pull out, making her cry out of need. Go on. I stand in front of her. She nods anxiously as she pushes her hair behind before going on her knees as she takes me in the mouth. Yes, that's like a best whore. I grit out as I pull her hair, making her look at me. Do you want me to spill inside your mouth? I ask her, and she gives me a nod like a puppy. Good. Come on, go on to the floor. Beg for me, like your life depends on this. She struggles to settle on her back as her eyes and body feels restless with the missed pleasure. She puts her tongue as she gives me a lustful nod as her hands hold my feet. Say it. I order as I lean down, stroking myself. Spill inside my mouth, sir. Please. Her voice sounds like a craving, and I smile as I come undone. My spill poured down to her mouth as she stays in between my legs, on the ground. Chapter 65, Penelope POV I'll call you tonight, okay? I promise. Stephen plants a soft kiss on my knuckles as he looks down at our hands. Okay. That's all I'm able to say as I look ahead of me. His car isn't there. I'm sure he isn't home. Good day. Stephen smiles as I get down. I smile back at him as I make my way inside. Good morning. Althea smiles as she notices me. I nod at her as I go upstairs. Removing my heels, I crash on the bed as I crawl up into a ball. I feel somewhat different tonight. No matter how much I try, I can't deny the fact that it's crazily complicated. And the craziness here is me, myself. I want them both, but it's so confusing that it's pricking my head. I'm sure the situation doesn't mean anything to both of the men. But for me, sleeping with Stefan... I have no choice, like it's not my wish. But Stephen, it's my choice, 
and even he has made sure it's clear that I'm clear regarding the situation. I don't want to compare. Both my hands down, I'll any day choose Stephen, but then, he isn't even in the picture. Picture of future, which Stefan talks about. I myself feel low. Various thoughts, like what would my mom will think if she's watching me from somewhere. She would feel disgusted, right? Sleeping with both the brothers and enjoying the both? The pleasure? The one who makes love to you, a sweet love, while other one fucks you hard like he doesn't care. At the end, I'm starting to crave both. Maybe I'm the bad person here, because I can't get myself to regret all of this. It feels too much. Hello? I look up to Travis as he hands over a phone for me, which is put on a speaker. Mr. Colton wants to talk to you. Travis speaks before leaving the room without any further word. Stephen? I ask surprisingly, because Stefan will never care to call me, I'm aware. Is that Stephen? He just dropped off in the morning, and he has called now? Yes, the one and only. Guess what? He asks teasingly. What? I ask. I'm planning to get a dog, a puppy. I hear the excitement behind his voice as he continues. And you want to know a secret? He asks, and I nod unknowingly, forgetting that he can't see me. What secret? I ask him when I realize. You shouldn't tell this to anybody. Do you hear me? Stephen laughs out loud, his voice echoing in the room. Okay, I manage to say, as I try to shut my lips as it's wide open. I'm smiling too, hearing his laugh. Stephenson hates animals, like he's scared. He's got this weirdest thing called sinophobia. That's the reason we never had pets till date. But I guess now I should, and he should fucking learn to overcome his fears. My jaw drops down as I hear Stephen. Really? That's all I manage to utter as I feel surprised. Stefan fears animals? He looks like a fireball that can burn the world bit. Like, out of every possible thing I would imagine about Stefan. This particular information came like out of syllabus. Yes, but listen. I'm going on a meeting tomorrow, but they are going to drop Max off at your place and you, my love. Take care of Maxie till his new daddy finds him a home. Stephen says, Maxie? I ask. Yes, I gave the puppy a name. How's it? Stephen asks. It's good. I whisper. So you will take care of my baby boy tomorrow till I come fetch him? Stephen asks, Okay. I smile. I love animals. And I wish Stephen will let me have more of his pet. Because I just love them. Just their presence can be so fulfilling. Stephen, POV. Okay, mail me as soon as possible. Not a minute late. I speak to Maya on the phone as I walk inside. Scott opens the door for me, and I give him a nod as I motion him leave. I need some peace. I was supposed to be having a dinner meeting tonight, but blady fuck, it got canceled. They wasted my time. I slam my hands against my thighs as I cut the call. I remove my blazer as I place it on the counter along with my watch and phone. Undoing my tie, I walk over as I pour myself a glass of wine. The house feels very quiet. Aren't three other people living here? I look around the place as I sip on my drink. I'm starving. I guess I forgot my lunch today as I was stuck on a conference call. Althea, I call out. As I hear few noises, 
I turn around at the living room, and I see a little puppy who is coming towards my direction. I take my steps back as I raise my hand in the air, but correct, the puppy doesn't follow the orders. They don't understand your language. Travis, where the fuck are you? Who got this creature in my house? I scream out as my fear makes me fucking angry. I hate it. I hate the fear in me. I'm just scared of those animals. And whoever got it here will have a tough time. It's just a puppy, Penelope whispers, as she takes the dog into her arms, rubbing its back like she cares. Can she make out my fear? Sir, Travis asks, get that creature out now. First of all, from where did you get it? I glare at Travis, who fidgets for answer, seeing my annoyance. It's not his fault, but mine. Stephen asked me if I could look after him today, and I agreed. I'm sorry. Penelope speaks as she takes a step front, and my eyes falls on her. As she stands, blinking a small amount of fear behind those lashes, as her blue eyes watches me, she licks her own lips as my eyes narrow down at her. Like she's scared, the puppy in her hand barks at me, fucking barks. But that's not it. It's the fact that it was got by Stephen, who obviously knows about my fucking fear of dogs. Somewhere, I don't trust her on this. My brother knows my fear, but he might. I am about his stupid decisions, too. My voice comes out cold as I point at Penelope. I don't care. I own this place like I own you. Chapter 66, Penelope POV Get it out, now. I shudder as I hear Stephenson's cold voice as he points at the Travis. Travis nods as he takes a step front but my shaky voice slips down my lips. No! Before I could take it back, he has heard it, and his face looks bright red in anger as he fists his hands. Travis? Now! He orders. Travis snatches the puppy from my hands, and Stefan barges towards me as he grabs my wrist as he drags me over. I just don't utter any further word as I stumble on my steps to match his pace, as he drags me to the room, my room. What did you say? Stefan scowls as he pushes my body down on the bed. I whimper as the force has me shaking. No! A small tear escapes my eyes. Stefan hovers on top of me as he holds me down on the bed. He grabs my hands as he raises it above my head as he leans down. I feel his heavy breathe on my skin. If anything you should have known till date is not to disobey me, your master. Never to say no. No. Stefan's voice goes deeper as his eyes glares at me. I guess you haven't learnt your lessons yet and it's not too late. A small smirk forms on his lips as he loosens his grip. He moves away, his anger reduced, but his eyes still holds it. He wasn't happy seeing the puppy and my obvious defiance, but I promised Stephen to look after the puppy. I know he doubts me when I told Stephen got it, and Stefan never came home this early but I guess you can't expect anything from the devil. Expect the unexpected. Althea? Stephenson calls out as he turns out, his eyes glaring at me. While I watch him confused, Yes, sir? I hear Althea's hurried steps as she answers him, anxiously, too afraid to disobey the master. Pack the bag. She's coming with me. 
Stefan speaks before he heads out, leaving me and Altea confused as we watch, each other clueless. After packing my bags, Altea walks towards me as she helps me fix my hair. Where am I going? I look up to her, confused. We don't know. Nobody knows except the master himself. She sighs as she combs my long hair. What about Stephen? He was supposed to be here in some time. I ask, as my heart starts to race rapidly. So many scarier thoughts rushing to my mind. I'll not mind to trade you off. If not me, you should have been on the road. His harsh words from the past days, causing a new verge of fear inside me, and just the thought about the same leaves me shaking. Stephen, sir, is informed. Travis is on his way to drop Max at Mister Colton's place. You don't worry. I just swallowed the lump in my throat. It's just a puppy, but still he has got a fault, and he's going to make me learn from it. Sir is informed about what? Altea walks in front of me as she advises me. Don't be scared. Just listen to him, and you will be fine. I watch the house in front of me, nothing like the one I lived these days. It has got a huge parking spot and a squared kind of place. It's a penthouse, with a attached swimming pool, a glass frame doors with huge windows, giving a peek of what's inside. If you're waiting for me to open the door or invite you to get down, Stefan points his finger at me. Seeing me still seated in the car, I just nod at him as I get down, rushing towards him. Where are we? I manage to mutter under my breath as he unlocks the door using his thumb impression. It's all censored. Place where my kitten belongs, my place, my world in here, and you, you're my new pet. You were so challenging, right? That you didn't wanted to let that dog taken away. Now guess what? I'm never letting you taken away either, because you're my pet, a pet who's going to be tagged along for today, tomorrow, and forever. No choice, baby. Stefan smiles as he speaks, his words making sense to me. Being his pet, the images of that one particular night back in London. Comes to my mind and my breathing gets heavy. Go on, check your new place. Stefan smiles as his eyes watches me and my every single movement intently as he walks over onto the couch, which is right in front of the door but at a distance. I take a step front, but wait, wait. Stefan voices makes me halt at my step as I stand frozen. No woman has walked inside my place with such clothes. So, what do we do now? Seeing your poor appearance, his smile drops as he clenches his jaw. Why don't you strip yourself down, Penelope? My eyes go wide as I hear him, and I just stand there, my jaw clenched, watching him clueless. Do you want me to repeat my words, Penelope? Stefan stands tall as he rolls his sleeves over his elbows as he crosses his arms, watching me. Why? I manage to whisper. No questions here. You will only take my orders, and you have no choice but to follow them. Every step he takes towards me, making me scare for my own life. He's aware about what he's doing, but still he does. Since it's your first time, let me guide you. He leans over as he whispers into my ears, as his hands reach my back. Within a second, he unzips my dress, and I feel his cold nails against my backbone as he drags it down. I shiver at his touch as I crash against his chest. You shouldn't have said no to me. I hear his clenched voice. 
I had promised Stephen to look after the puppy. My voice cracks as I bring my hands over his waist, as I clutch onto his shirt, as tears start building my eyes. This time he nods like he's aware about that now. It was just a small no, but it was my courage, my disobedience, which he's pointing at. I feel his hot breathe against my bare skin as he speaks. That's okay. Promises are meant to be breaked, and he's well aware. Chapter sixty seven. Penelope POV. Please, I manage to whisper. Yes, I like this word. Stefan shoves my hands away as he takes a step back. His hands reach my shoulders. As he pushes my dress down, shutting my eyes, I stand with all the courage left in me, and all the hope in me. My selection is always the best. He slurs his words huskily as he leans down, and he bites down my shoulders as he undoes my bra, which falls on to the ground. I try to cover my naked breasts, but his eyes warns me. With a clear indication stating it's a no, like it's forbidden, let those panties stay. Go to the kitchen and pour me a glass of scotch. He walks around me as he cups my ass before squeezing them, and gives me a small push. I take my steps slow as I walk towards the kitchen. The glassed surface points my nakedness as I pour the drink. Leaving my tears unstoppable, come here. He points at the place between his legs as I stand in front of him with a drink in my glass. My chest raising heavy and my eyes blur. He takes the drink from my hands as he pulls me down. For a second, I think he will push me onto the ground, but no, he pulls me onto his lap. And my naked breasts glide against his chest as he holds me down. I can feel his warmth, but his eyes watches me, not with lust or a desire, but something more than that, which I can't figure out well. He looks at me different, and it makes me want to crawl against his skin. You know what's your punishment for tonight? He asks. As his grip gets tighter around my waist, no, I manage to whisper, desperation. His word stands firm as he gets up, holding me single-handedly, like I own no weight. As he carries me easily, pushing me onto the bed, he stands in front of me. His hands slowly unbutton his shirt. His eyes catches mine, and it's fire, the heat. The situation. I swallow the lump as I push my body on the bed with the help of my elbows. As I watch him remove his shirt, stretching his arms out, he lets his shirt drop down. A small smirk plays on his lips. I try to bring my legs together, but his eyes warns me again. It's a no. I have got a little piece of new jewelry for you. He smirks as he warns me again, his eyes watching me. Either you can keep them wide, or he walks back with a weird chain, but it looks familiar, and a pair of handcuffs. I try to get myself up from the bed, but he is quick enough to grab my feet as he locks it to the edge of the bed frame, as he stands in between my legs, having them spread apart. No, I manage to whisper as he walks over, bringing a chain with clamps on the other hand. Today, your mouth will be let free. He adds, "I scream out as my hands come over his chest as I try to push him, as he brings the clamp closer to my nipple. The cold metal makes me flinch. You don't want me to tie your hands, do you?" He raises his eyes at me. A bonus for you today. Only if you keep your hands away now. Later, I'll give you permission to touch me. He smirks a knowing smile. I hesitate, but I bring my hands away. 
He knows he can tie me up, but he wants me to do it myself. Desperation. He gives me a nod when I fidget with my hands, but still I manage to put them away from him. Like stating, I took a right decision. I flinch as the cold metal pricks around my nipples, tingling my skin. Perfect, he adds, with a hum in his voice like a appreciation. I'm going to ask you a question now. Truth? The right answer will be rewarded. False? One. He just smiles as he stands, his arms crossed. False one will be punished. Do you understand, Penelope? I give him a half nod as he stresses my name. And the way he takes it? It's different. Yes. He smiles as he hears my shaking voice. Are you wet, Penelope? Wet for me? Stefan voices sounds clear. And I swallow the lump in my throat. This is beyond my imagination. My chest feels heavy, as my nipples are dragged down by the weight of nipple clamps, and my feet feels numb as it's tied up. I feel like I'm stuck. Closing my eyes, I try to take in a deep breathe. You're not going to take the whole night to answer a simple question, or do you? I feel his body against mine, his hard chest pressed against mine, pushing the metal on my nipple against my body, making me ache. As I feel his hardness pressed on my belly, as he whispers into my ear, I guess I should find it myself. His voice sounds deeper as his lips move against my ears. He drags his tongue down twirling it around my nipples before he reaches all the way down in between my legs. Open your eyes, Penelope. He orders, and I comply as I try hard not to throw my waist. For a second, I expect him to use his fingers to pleasure me or tease me, but he licks his own lips with a smirk as he plants a kiss on my sex on top of my panties. Pushing the fabric aside, I feel his tongue on my entrance, and I give up all the self-control in me. As I call his name out, I arch my back like craving him to go deeper. I feel his smirk as he pushes his tongue inside, my sex. His hands comes forward as he grabs the chain, my breasts feel ripped as he pulls the metal chain. The clamps around my breasts hurt, but it's not pain, not just pain. It's pleasure. This is his kind of pleasure. His games, his play, and I'm sure he meant it when he told I'm his pet. His eyes watches mine as he observes the way my face twitch with pleasure. As the pleasure starts hitting me, but Chapter 68 Penelope POV The pleasure starts hitting me, but he smiles as he pulls away. He licks his own lips and growls out softly as he tastes me on his lips. I feel desperate, as he doesn't do anything to my craving, my aching need which has built inside me. And that's when his word strikes me. Desperation. You want to come? He questions as he raises his eyes at me, a knowing look like he could read me and my thoughts attached to it. And I just watch him like I'm seeing him for the first time, like he's just got down from the heaven way. You can always ask what you want, he adds as his hands reach his trousers as he unbutton his pants. I look away from the visuals he's providing in front of me, he wants to push me to the end, make me crave, make me beg. Do that again. His voice hints a tone of anger as he walks towards me. Grabbing my neck, he pulls me up, our lips inches away. He will never kiss me. He runs by rules. I'm nothing more than that. 
I told you, you can touch me. Now it's time. He steps away as he grabs my wrists, placing it right above his trouser pant. I just stare at him, blankly. What is he expecting? Touch me, he orders. I try not to shake. What if he hates it when I do? Or gets angry? Or what if I don't like it myself? But I push all those thoughts aside as I nod to him. I try to move my hands above, but he holds my hand firm. Not here, honey, he adds as he points my hands to the direction of his cock. Please him well, he will reward you. Or not, just like previous time, you will not be allowed to come, even if you beg, cry, or plead. His voice cold makes me shiver. I try to move my hands away. Okay, then I'll touch you, Stefan says as he settles down next to me, like a counterattack to my move. Still so stubborn? He asks, like a curse as his hands find my neck. As he pulls me against his chest as he bites the nape of my neck, I wince as he bites it harder. He lifts me gently as he settles down and places me in between his legs, which feels numb as it's been tied up. I feel his hard cock against my ass as he presses his body against mine. Being stubborn won't help you. Just try your luck by submitting to your master. I can fetch you the moon and the back. He whispers into my ears as he finds the openings of my sex his fingers teasing my clit and I ache for him, as he doesn't touch but creates the anticipation, a desperation for his touch. Please. A whisper escapes my throat like a painful cry. Say it. Say you want it. He orders as he pinches my clitoris hood, making me cry out in pleasure. Fuck me, Stefan, please. Make me come, master. I cry out as a tears escapes my eyes. My voice sounds foreign to me. Within a swift, he pushes my body up, unlocking the handcuffs. He brings my legs around his waist. My breathing feels erratic while he looks calm. But the hardness between his legs says me he wants it too. Pushing his pants down, he frees his cock. As he strokes himself, watching me, one day your mouth will be full, as you will suck on my cock, begging me to come in your mouth while you stay at my feet. He growls. I just stare at him. He's the epitome of sin. This isn't normal, nor he is, nor I am. I find the courage as I bring my shaking hand to touch him, and when I do, he guides me to stroke himself but quickly scoffs like he is pissed. That's enough. I'm growing impatient seeing your fucking innocence. I never knew someone so naive like you, so young like you can be my type, but now you are. He growls out as he pushes my body down, raising my hands above my head as he thrusts into me, making me gasp for my breathe as he goes hard and rough. His jaw clenched like the words he uttered before, didn't gain his appreciation. He growls out loud like an animal. As he pulls out, flipping me around, he raises my ass in the air as he takes me from behind. His hand slaps my ass cheeks as he thrusts into me, each thrust leaving my body shaking. As my breasts feel swollen with those clamps around me, he grabs a fistful of my hair as he pulls my head up, and I look at him through the corner of my eyes, and I watch the way his teeth clenches as he pumps into me. His muscles look ripped as he takes in sharp breath as he continues to pump inside me. I sense like my walls are going to shudder as I feel my whole body shaking, a feeling from inside as I know I'm going to climax soon but the intensity even before my orgasm scares me. 
but he leans over as he whispers into my ears, Come for me. And I comply, just like his pet. I come hard, as per his wish and order. I call his name out loud on top of my lungs as my lips starts to shiver as I come hard, milking him. He thrusts two, three times more, as he spills his cum, but instead of pulling away, he just stays still as he watches me, my face as I stare at him back. I don't want to loose the connection we are sharing now. If he can bury himself inside me, I'll welcome him happily. Bye. You can take the guest room. His voice sounds cold as he speaks, asking me to leave indirectly while he's still inside me. I'm not offering you my comfort tonight. Not when you have angered me. Leave. With that, he pulls away in one movement, leaving me gasp for air, and a small groan escapes my throat at the loss. I feel my legs shake as I try to stand up. He walks over as he lifts his shirt from the ground and throws it at my direction. See yourself out. He points at the door as he walks inside the restroom. I just tried to process things. What just happened? As my body is still carrying his scent and his spill, which still feels wet in between my legs. Chapter 69 Penelope POV I stretch my legs. As I shift, the couch is big, but not that comfortable. I couldn't make it past the couch previous night. Feeling miserable, I crawled up into a ball as I fell asleep crying to myself last night. It's just too confusing. Everything. The entire situation. I want try to focus on the brighter side of things. So day by day, I'm not miserable but I don't see any brighter side here. Digging a pair of clothes, I walk towards the room at the corner, down the hallway. I just want to wash the marks he has left behind. When I start to try feel better, it gets worse. I just want him to get away from me. A minute he looks scary but tolerable, but at the end, he shows his dark side which reminds me again and again why I hate him. Turning the shower on, I strip myself as I stand under the hot water. My whole body feels ached. It's a different pain. It's frustration that he kicked me out of his room. I don't know what I was expecting last night, but not his coldness. I wouldn't have minded a good spanking, but he pushed me to the ground. I feel like I have been cheated up like snatching the candy from a kid who's enjoying it already. My hands reach down as I touch myself. Feeling sore, I gasp when I feel my sensitive opening. I'm not sure what the hell I'm doing, but too many memories from previous night rushes back to my mind. Instead of looking at his bad phase, I focus on his smirk, the way he held me on his lap, and I feel ready for him to take me. His soft moans, heavy breathes play in my mind, and I want to cry. Cry for him. A small moan escapes my throat as I go deeper. I'm touching myself, pleasuring myself, but still I need his warm hands on me, his eyes staring at me. He's driving me crazy. If I can run away, I would. Maybe I'll find my way to Stephen. But Stefan words strike me. I'm never letting you taken away either, because you're my pet. A pet who's going to be tagged along for today, tomorrow, and forever. No choice, baby. The word forever sounds different every time I relive the memories. He wants me as his pet, as his paid possession, not anything else. But fuck it. Yes, I'm myself taking the fuck word. I was so different before the devil's eyes caught me. Now I'm cursed, and he's my sin. Stephenson POV I look around my place as my eyes search for her. Noticing the guest room door left open, 
I walk inside. Maybe I shouldn't have treated her like that. I was just too pissed at my self-realization about that little girl who has gotten under my skin so soon. And I feel like day by day I'm getting obsessed over her. When she begs me, when she cries, or pleads, all that I need is her. And I don't like this feeling. No, I hate this. She's starting to drive me crazy, and I'm hating it too bad. Maybe I should avoid her. Just send her away with my brother for a few days, and when she turns 18 and ready to bear my child, I can have her back. Maybe get her pregnant clinically. But I have gotten her taste on my lips, and I'm not sure I can let her go easily. Not in this lifetime. Because as day goes by, she's turning into my obsession. My new addiction. I hear the shower running as I enter the room. The shower lights are turned on. The water is running in the background. But that's not something which catches my attention. Yes, I hear her soft cry. Taking my steps towards the bathroom, I stand at the door, my hands rested on the doorknob, as I hear her moan out slowly and softly. Stefan! For a second, I wonder whether I heard her slip my name. For real, or it's just my sex-filled mind playing games with me. But she did. I know it. Yes. So, I open the door as I decide to join her. Taking a shower isn't that hard. It's no romance, right? Such a dirty girl. My low voice breaks the hot room. She flinches as she hears my voice. That's okay. Relax. Keeping my voice low, not wanting to scare her, I strip myself as I go stand behind her, naked. Stefan? Her voice feels gutted as my warm hands come around her waist. She's calling my name, like she's just learned how to tall. Yes, I whisper in her ears as I hold her. I hate you, she just blurts out, like she's just learned those words, learning how to say them. And her small realization makes me growl softly as I hear her. Go away! A small tear escapes her eyes as she relaxes under my touch. I guess I'm not the only fucked animal here. A small smirk plays on my lips as she presses her body against mine, as she rests her weight against me, her hands coming over mine. I will. I answer, even though it wasn't any sort of question. And even when I deep down know, the answer is untrue. I press my head against her shoulder as I plant a soft kiss on her smooth skin. But before that, let me hear my name, more loud and clear. I add, she fights to move away from me. Her body freezes as she realizes that I'm also real, as real as she was touching herself remembering me and spilling my name, pleasuring her. I, she gasps as she turns around facing me. I heard you spill my name. And now I'm here. Taking a step closer, I shut the space between us as our naked chest gets pressed against each other's. Go on, touch yourself. I mutter softly as my hands go around her ass as I squeeze her cheeks. No! She fights as she tries to get away from me. See? This is wrong. You never say no to me. Understand? I grab her elbow as I make her stop. Fuck, it feels like I'm explaining right and wrong to a young kid. My soft voice surprises me. Her eyes go wide as I lean forward, maybe in anticipation of a kiss. But instead I push her body against the wall, lifting her legs around my waist. Holding on to her tight, having our foreheads pressed together, our eyes holding the heat which is burning between us, like it could burn the walls down. 
You still want me go away? I ask. My voice feels low and deep as I look at her. She shakes her head, giving me a slight nod as she grips my arms. I'm not sure if it's a yes or no, or whether she's unsure about it. But I can't stop hating you, she whispers as she leans forward. For a second, I feel like she will kiss me. But no, she just stops. What? Are you doing? I ask, like an instant reaction to her sudden closeness. Trying to figure you out. And her answer leaves me laughing as I shake my head, but holding her firm as I add, Best of luck for that. Chapter 70 Stephen POV The pet was my choice. You don't have to blame her. And I don't understand why the hell you're making it a big deal. I mutter my words as I stand in front of my brother. I make no small deal, Stephen. I do everything big and huge. Stefan smiles as he speaks, his voice calm and composed, as he goes back reading his fucking file and sipping his coffee. His hair still looks wet. I know I'm handsome but you can finish what you want to say and leave. I have got a meeting. Stefan looks at me as he smiles, smugly. Where is she? I ask, annoyed by his smile. My place. And yes, until she gets back home, you can't pay her a visit. His voice stays calm, but deep as he leans back on his chair, his eyes narrowed at me. Did I wanted to visit her? Yes, but... What did you do to her? I ask him. Seeing his calmness, I feel pissed. He's an asshole. Oh, I did many things. Where do you want me to start? Stefan smirks as our eyes meet, a knowing smile on his face as he speaks. Shaking my head, I say, You're such a bastard. I'm telling you, it's my mistake. I push the argument as I raise my voice. Then who the fuck told you to get a puppy and drop it off at my home when you clearly aware about the fact that I have sinophobia? Stefan hells as he stands up, tall in front of me, pushing his chair behind. His anger doesn't surprise me or his reason, but the fact that he just said home leave me astonished. How the hell will I know you will get your ass back to your home so early and to that particular home? I stress my words as I point at him. He looks different, but I'm not sure in what way. It's my wish, my fucking wish to go wherever hell I want. Stefan snaps back at me. Fuck you. I'm sorry, okay? I shrug. I just hated going back home alone. I thought a puppy will be nice to get back home. I add, Stefan doesn't argue. He stays quiet, like he knows all about it. Anyway, what about the trip to Paris? I ask. His eyes narrows at me as he hears me mention Paris. What about Paris? Stefan questions, his voice gaining a sudden switch from firm to cold as he watches me. I'm planning to fill in your position and go myself, instead of you. I add. Stefan stares at me, his eyes raised without a further word. Like he can't believe me. What? I shrug, seeing his obvious silence. I hate him. And where should I start? Explain. Should I even ask you that? Stefan rolls his eyes at me. I just thought new place can bring me change of mind and bring some positivity into my life which I need the most right now. I resonate. You have never traveled alone. You know what? Let's go together. Stefan suggests. Yes, I have never gone alone because I was in a relationship, but he thinks I'm a pussy that I never traveled alone. Shut the fuck up. I'm not a kid, okay? I know better about taking care of myself. And yeah, who told I'm going alone? I smile as I speak, 
His eyes looks at me disbelieved. I'm not sure what's running behind Stephenson's head. I'm going with Max, I add. Who the hell will Max be? He raises his eyes. Oh, didn't you meet him previous night? I thought you guys met. My new puppy. I grin wide. Stefan clenches his voice as he looks away, taking in a deep breath, trying to calm himself. For a good minute. You can take Penelope with you. He offers. But no, not because I don't want her to come with me. In fact, I would like to spend more and more time with P. But then, I can't always be the side bun here. I should give them a chance to themselves. Just like the way it turned from home to house. I want Stefan to grow on Penelope. And while she gets comfortable with Stefan, because there is no other way to deal with this weird situation we three are in, I should get out of the picture, at least for now. So, I know I gave them a choice to grow better in the situation. Again, this may not be the better decision of my life, but then, leaving Penelope? Huh, it's crazy how much she has influenced me these past few days, like she brings in a new excitement, a happiness in me, in a good way. Like whenever I come across a new movie, I save it up so we can both watch it when we hang out. She's been the best thing happened in my lately, but this is the most feasible thing to do. Maybe not the right one. No, I think take some time to myself, figure out what I want for me and for my future. My voice goes low as I mention future. Stefan doesn't question, no more, as he states, Okay, I'll make the necessary arrangements. I'll forward the files and details about the meeting, and I'll have a temporary office set up for you. Yes, a personal assistant to take good care of you, and anything you need. Just name it, okay? Stefan asks, I'm sure he's nor very pleased with this decision of mine, but he doesn't argue. Okay, but before I leave, I would like to spend some time with P. I say quickly, before he gets engaged in work. Stefan just nods at me as he hears me. I'll have her back tomorrow morning. You can have your time. Stefan speaks, but it sounds different. Maybe I'm just imagining it. Okay, I'll see you soon. I turn around to leave, but I hear his voice. I'm here for you, okay? I mean it. Stephenson's eyes finds mine as I look over at him, as he speaks seriously. I know. I smile. But doesn't mean you can fuck my business up, so prepare your ass off. He smirks. Yes, the devil has his own shades. Why don't you go fuck yourself? I sigh, hating his words. Oh, I wish I could. But see, got a lot of work to do. And one stupid bastard decided to show up at my office and waste my time.